Radio is a pervasive technology. Mm -hmm. um, all of your uh, Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, uh, your cell phone, all of those things are radio. Sure. And so um, amateur radio allows you to do everything that can be done with radio Very and then some because there's a lot of things that add on to amateur radio that go with it that can be done as well. But as far as communications goes, um, you can communicate with someone that's 50 feet away, you can communicate with someone that's 50 miles away, and you can communicate with someone that's 50,000 miles away. Well, that's very unlikely. Twice around the world. Yeah. There are people <laughs> actually bouncing signals off of the moon mm. and then back to Earth. Very interesting. Yes, and so anything you can do with radio, you can do with amateur radio. We have access to um, frequencies throughout the spectrum mm -hmm. and so we can do any kind of experimentation any kind of communication that we want and one of the best things about ham radio I think is the fact that when all other communication forms break down um, cell towers need power um, satellites need good weather mm -hmm. um, you know long distance phone lines need phone lines all of these things require infrastructure Ham radio requires no infrastructure mm -hmm. to talk over distance. And nominal power, right? I mean, yes, you can plug a couple of leads to the battery um, on your car and you're on the air. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All you need is, is a source of 12 volts and a wire you can throw in a tree and you can talk around the world. Well, this is very interesting because I think that many of um, the viewers of the Redneck Homestead channel will take particular interest in what you just said, the backup emergency source of communication, because uh, if you've uh, looked at all on the Redneck Homestead channel, we've done a lot of work off-grid, and that's really where we're focused, is building um, systems that don't require the commercial power systems, and mm -hmm. that aren't connected to the commercial and um, the, the connected grid system, um, whether that be cell phones or the, the Public Utilities Commission and the Water and Sewer, Department. So, I mean, maybe you can help me understand and help us all understand. Do you just go to like a ham store and say, I want a radio that I can communicate around the world with? And is that the same radio that you're going to communicate um, across the street with? Can you help, um, without, without going into too much um, technical detail, can you help us understand what all is involved? Um, it sounds like this ham universe is pretty large. Yes, and very, very. Can you kind of encapsulate what's involved from a hardware and um, antenna perspective? Well, it depends on what you want to do. Um, <clears throat> each section of the spectrum, each band, requires a different type of antenna. And there are types of antennas that can be used for multiple bands, but for, you know, for each portion of the spectrum, you're going to want different equipment. Um, generally, you have radios available that will do just the HF portion of the band. Those are the worldwide bands. I'm um, sorry, just the HF portion of the spectrum. Those are the worldwide bands that uh, allow you to bounce signals off of the stratosphere and talk around the world. Or, as was the case uh, after Hurricane Katrina, you can bounce signals off the stratosphere and maintain communication between the disaster area and people uh, mm -hmm. trying to uh, get messages in and out uh, outside of the, the disaster area. Can you help us understand um, what's a repeater, for example? Okay. Because there's well, a lot of, that, that word repeater is constantly used in the amateur radio community. Yes, it is. Um, stepping up or, or down, however you want to word it, but um, stepping away from HF, um, which are the worldwide bands, um, you get into VHF and um, bands like 50 megahertz and 144 megahertz particularly, which is also known as two meters, um, those are used heavily and one of the things that we as hams can do on those frequencies is we're allowed to use devices called repeaters. And what a repeater is, is it's a radio. It sits on a mountaintop and everything it hears, it retransmits. So you have this radio that's sitting in a very good location for radio reception and transmitting. And mm -hmm. so your weak signal gets retransmitted out again and covers a wider area. So for instance, um, if 
I want to talk to someone that lives, say, in Wolfboro, um, which is a town not too far from here, but it's far. You might away. not be able to get it directly. Right, it's far enough away that there are hills in the way mm -hmm. and things like that, so it wouldn't be a direct conversation. Um, but there are several repeaters in the area that I could use, so all I have to do is program my radio to talk to that repeater, mm -hmm. and then the person I want to talk to on the other end can potentially hear me. So theoretically, if you had a useful range, I'm just going to use the term useful range um, of, say, 10 miles, mm -hmm. just given the conditions, then the person that you wanted to speak with had a useful range of 10 miles, but you really they weren't an overlapping 10 miles, but that yep. repeater was sitting in the middle somewhere. Right. You both touch the repeater, and therefore you're related. Is that how it, that works? Exactly. Because the repeater generally being higher, um, <clears throat> one common misconception about repeaters is that they transmit at a higher power level. Mm. They don't. Most of them are putting out between 5 and 25 watts. Wow. Um, but it's their location mm -hmm. that makes them so good. Um, it's also their input filtering. Mm -hmm. um, they're very sensitive devices generally, and so they can pick up signals that are very weak and retransmit them um, in in such a way that they're easy to hear on very the other end. And so, yeah, they have a, a generally tend to have a very wide coverage area compared to uh, a local transmitter on the ground, like the one in your car, for instance. Sure, interesting. Now. In the event that, say, uh, you wanted to communicate with someone um, a distance away, I mean, my understanding is that you're sending your your radio signal up to space for all intents and purposes and shooting it back down to the ground. Is that right? Kind of like uh, you might send, um, you might bounce light off of a mirror. Is that yes. somewhat when you're, when you're When you're dealing with HF, when you're dealing with worldwide communications via radio, mm -hmm. Uh, we all know that light, and radio is a form of light, it's just light at a lower frequency. Right. Um, light only travels in straight lines. So, what happens, it's not actually making it to space. If it makes it to space, it's gone past the mirror. The mirror is the stratosphere. Right. Um, certain layers in the stratosphere at certain times of day in certain conditions will act like mirrors to certain radio frequencies. Hmm. And so, radio frequencies that are too low will just go out to space, as will radio frequencies that are too high. But radio frequencies that are in that range will bounce from the stratosphere and then back down. I know they're not seeing my hand. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bounce up to the stratosphere and then back down again. Uh -huh. um, and bounce off the ground. And they'll do this many times. You can actually, in some very rare cases, hear your own signal mm -hmm. coming back to you an eighth of a second later. Interesting. Yes. Very neat stuff. Now, I, I can't help but ask you, you have this big <laughs> rack, this array of information um, right in front of the camera, yep. coincidentally. <laughs> Can you help us, um, I mean, you don't need to go through every item on here, but is this common? I no. Mean, Okay, no, so I, I am an electronics nerd. I'm, okay, I'm a test equipment and electronics nerd. So I have a lot of things here. Um, the radios are actually limited to right here. But, oh, oh that's a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the radios are limited to just these air, this area here. In fact, this is the radio, and this is faceplate, and this is my stupid cane. Um, this is telling me how much current is being drawn from my uh, from my power supply. Um, and speaking of backup power, this is the cable that leads to my batteries. Now uh, down here, where you can't see at the moment, I have about a week's worth of backup power for this setup hmm, um, right. in the form of uh, sealed lead acid batteries. Uh, I also have uh, various pieces of test equipment um, and a large variac up at the top which is a device for, uh, it's not variable auto transformer, allows you to put out uh, various AC voltages. Um, it's up there, you can't see it. <laughs> well, maybe we can, there, there we, we go. go. You get just that. That thing right up there. There it is. Um, and that'll put up, out, that will put out up to 10 amps AC. Wow. Um, at any voltage between zero and 140. Wow. So, so you could give yourself a, a good shake with that. Um, yeah, you could kill yourself <laughs> with that. Yeah.
Um, well, this is such an enormous, enormous um, subject. To just say I want to talk about amateur radio is almost a silly and um, unachievable task. You can go on for quite a while, yes. Yeah, and from what I have uh, come to understand, people find um, corners of amateur radio that they're interested in. And when you're kind of a new guy like me, you tend to be interested in all of it. And I'm sure that my... my uh, appreciation uh, will grow, but my interest may narrow as I get a little more involved. And Sorry. What I, that's okay. What I'd like to do is if, um, if you'd be willing to join us sometime again in the future, I maybe we'll, we'll dial in, pardon the pun, on, <laughs> um, on we'll, hone, we'll home in on some um, particular areas of amateur radio. Absolutely. And maybe open up the discussion a little bit more. And um, you know, with this, with the whole YouTube world, um, it's interesting because I have so many uh, friends from the YouTube community that are amateur radio operators, and uh, I never would have known had I not <laughs> spoken up. And um, it's it's interesting to see how this thing um, unfolds. But thank you very much for taking the time here. This is really a very special opportunity. It's my and, pleasure. Uh, perhaps we could even do a, uh, a one of those live streaming YouTube events at some point where we could uh, take some live questions and things. Because uh, I have lots of questions, but they're not all good questions. So <laughs> maybe we could get some really good questions. Um, if, if you we'll, enjoyed if this, lucky, we'll, we'll get some answers that match them. I'm 100% I'm <laughs> sure of it. But if this is a type of video that you enjoyed, or if you enjoyed this particular video, we'd appreciate now is the time to give us a thumbs up. Um, that helps us uh, understand the types of content that you'd like to see us uh, bring forth. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, um, we'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Right now is the time to do that. And um, join us. You'll be notified when new videos come out and uh, when various different events come onto our radar that we'd like to pass on to you. So for now, this is the Redneck Homestead Channel. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you guys.